I think this is on. And I promised Lorian that I would actually use the microphone. Uh, and uh, this, uh, I have a quotation here from Albert Schweitzer. And I'm going to read it at the beginning, it's the lighting of the candle, and at the end. And I'm hoping, if everything goes right, that it actually has more meaning at the end. Um, at times, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. Standing on Treaty 6 territory, we recognize and acknowledge that this land on which we stand has been the gathering place for millennia of many Indigenous peoples. As Treaty people, we acknowledge, honour and respect the history, wisdom, knowledge, languages, ceremonies and culture of the First Nations of this continent, of the Métis peoples, of the Inuit, of all who gathered in this place, Amiskwichi. We learn from the First Peoples of our connection to the land, of our responsibility to protect and respect Mother Earth. We honour and respect and mourn the ancestors and children buried here, the missing and murdered Indigenous women and men. We acknowledge our need for collective healing. We remember that we are all treaty people and that we are all responsible for each other. Welcome to Westwood. Westwood is a welcoming space where we strive to embrace who and what we are, regardless of belief or how ourselves we currently conceive. Westwood is a challenging place where we individually and collectively trace a path that struggles to find truth. Westwood welcomes our elders, middles, muddles, and youths as a rain and a rainbow of peoples and beliefs. Theists, non-theists, atheists, paganists, agnostics, gnostics, cynics, and eccentrics, Westwood welcomes people regardless of race, color, class, creed, or breed, gender, ethnicity, unicity, or elasticity. Westwood welcomes how you conceive your growing identity on the continuum of discovery. Whichever pronouns you choose to use today or tomorrow, or the direction of your affections, or your color in the rainbow. Okay, the first song. There's gonna be a lot of singing. So uh, I'm not going to say stand up, sit down, or else you're going to think you fell into a Catholic mass. So we're, we're, uh, th this one's a fairly fast song, so we're going to have a, uh, do it a couple of times so you learn it. Well may the world go. Well may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well may the world go when I'm far away. Try that. Well may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well may the world go when I'm far away. Louder. <laughs> well may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well may the world go when I'm far away. And fortunately, the verses are the same melody. So try, if you can keep up. Well may the skiers turn, the swimmers learn, the lovers burn. Peace may the generals learn when I'm far away. Well may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well may the world go when I'm far away. Sweet may the fiddle sound, the banjo play the old ho down. Dancers swing round and round when I'm far away. Well may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well may the world go when I'm far away. Now here's the first, particularly pertinent for today. Fresh may the breezes blow, clear may the streams flow. Blue above and green below when I'm far away. Well may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well may the world go when I'm far away. Well may the world go, the world go, the world go. Well may the world go when I'm far away. Oh, 
Okay. And now, um, I, today, it, 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 sorry. Sorry, Lorian. <laughs> I have to learn to use the mic. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot about Pete and his environmental uh, work. And uh, back in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, Pete uh, created a project called the Clearwater Sloop, where they built this, this big sloop, which is a big sailing ship, an old time sailing ship from like 100 years ago, 150 years ago now, um, uh, on the Hudson River. And it was the first one that had been on the Hudson for like 50 years when they built it. And the idea was that they would sail up and down the river uh, doing concerts, raising awareness about how filthy the dirty uh, the river was so that they could work on getting it clean. And uh, there were challenges, and we're gonna talk about those challenges that, uh, that Pete encountered with that. Uh, and of course, now it's a great success. Uh, not only have they, they, you know, you can swim and most areas of Hudson now, which certainly wasn't the case at that time, but uh, even like General Electric, which had been burying P PCBs in the river and then made the argument in court because the Clearwater brought them to court uh, that oh, if they disturb the PCBs, that would be more dangerous and more damaging than to remove them. And uh, they lost the case. And, and uh, so, I mean, that this is the type of thing that the Clearwater has been doing is to not only raise awareness, but to actually change the way things are and how Pete got involved in that and, or how he spearheaded it and so on. So that's kind of going to be the focus today. Um, but uh, first, uh, we're going to do a song that I didn't plan on doing because I was thinking, oh, I can't believe I didn't, didn't pick this song because this is a... Uh, an important one. Uh, this is written by Bill Steele, and Pete's been singing this uh, around since 1968. Well, he's gone now, but I'm sure he's still singing in heaven. Mr. Thompson calls the waiter, order steak and baked potato. Never, sorry. He leaves the bone and gristle, and he never eats the skins. The busboy comes and takes it with a cough contaminates it and puts it in a can with coffee grounds and sardine tins. The truck comes by on Friday, carts it all away. A thousand trucks just like it are converging on the bay. Now here's your part. Whenever I say garbage, you have to go garbage, 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 four times, okay? So, converging on the bay, oh, garbage. We're filling up the sea with garbage. What will we do when there's no place left to put all the garbage? Mr. Thompson starts his Cadillac and drives along the freeway track, leaving friends and neighbors in a hydrocarbon haze. He's joined by lots of smaller callers, are sending gases to the stars, where they form a seething cloud that hangs up for 30 days. And the sun licks down upon it with an ultraviolet tongue, turns it into smog, and then it settles in our lungs. Oh, garbage. We're filling up the air with garbage. What will we do when there's nothing left to breathe but garbage? Getting home and taking off his shoes, he settles with the evening news while the kids do homework with the TV in one ear. Garbage, garbage, garbage. While Superman for the thousandth time sells talking dolls and conquers crime, dutifully they learn the date of birth of Paul Revere. In the papers, there's a piece about the mayor's middle name, and he gets it read in time to watch the all-star bingo game. Oh, garbage. We're filling up our minds with garbage. 
What will we do when there's nothing left to read And there's nothing left to need And there's nothing left to watch And there's nothing left to touch And there's nothing left to walk upon Nothing left to talk upon Nothing left to see And there's nothing left to be but garbage And that's the end of the song Except there's never an end to the song with Pete so, you know, he was singing it, and then, of course, he started to add verses. And so he added this verse. In Mr. Thompson's factory, they're making plastic Christmas trees, complete with silver tinsel and a geodesic stand. The plastic's mixed in giant vats that's from some conglomeration that's been piped from deep within the earth or strip mined from the land. And if you question anything they say, why don't you see? It's absolutely needed for the economy. Oh, garbage. Their stocks and their bonds, all garbage. What will they do when their system goes to smash? There's no value to their cash, and there's no money to be paid, and there's a world to be repaid. Their kids will read in history books about financiers and other crooks, feudalism and slavery, and nukes and all their knavery. To history's dustbin, they're consigned along with all many other kinds of garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage. That was a song that, uh, that uh, Pete Seeger was um, invited to sing on the Today Show. On uh, and and, and uh, you know one of the top-rated shows in in America, and he came on and he said, "Well, I'm going to sing this song, Garbage," and they go, <laughs> "Pete, it's kind of early to be singing such a song. Do you have any other songs?" And he said, "Okay, how about Walking Down Death Row?" And they said, uh, "Anything else? How about Last Train to Nuremberg?" And they said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do garbage. <laughs> and so he got away with that. Um, that, uh, that song did, uh, well, back in 1968, uh, Pete was kind of depressed. Um, and I, he's such an optimistic guy, uh, if, if his history, that it's hard to imagine that, but there were times uh, where in 1968 and 1973 were times when he was ready to quit uh, singing at all. And, uh, uh, and I mean, 1968, there was a lot going on, uh, assassinations and, and so on. Uh, and uh, Pete, uh, but on a personal note, Pete was gonna do a free concert at the kids' school, at the high school. And, um, and this is the start of the Clearwater, uh, because uh, we have a, the good Monsignor of Beacon Hills uh, to thank for, for the Clearwater Sloop, because uh, he started a movement against Pete's uh, being able to do this concert. And he got the Knights of Columbus and the Daughters of Mary and so on to organize and protest at the school board to prevent Pete from singing at this concert. And this became a huge issue in Beacon that, uh, and, uh, and people that Pete thought would support him just ditched him. And, um, and it was in fact, uh, a Republican business owner who, who took out an article in the, the local paper who calmed everything down by saying, I think America can survive a concert by Pete Seeger. <laughs> and, uh, but then Pete learned from that. He said he realized he'd been using where he lived as a hotel, uh, that he wasn't really part of the community, that he was, uh, um, you know, he was doing his thing all around the world and then just kind of uh, coming back. And, and he thought, you know, I need to get involved in, in the local thing. And, you know, and he was living on a farm and the Hudson was going by his farm and it was just, you know, putrid. I mean, you could see stuff floating in it, he, he said. And, and he'd been reading this book about sloops and he, and he came up with this idea of building this sloop and sailing it up and down the river. And nobody supported him. 
I mean, everybody, everybody thought he was crazy to do this. And, uh, and, and surprising a uh, number of people like uh, Mary Travers from Peter, Paul and Mary said, you'll, you'll never, it'll never happen. Nobody will ever, ever agree to, to support this. And uh, I just want to read you. There's a guy uh, named Erwin Silber, um, who is supposedly a friend of Pete. I kind of think of him as a frenemy. Uh, because he was always one of Pete's harshest critics. No matter what Pete did, there would be Erwin Silber criticizing Pete. And uh, when Pete was trying to get this off the ground, this is what he wrote to Pete. Being who you are, you have the ability to involve many others in your schemes for a variety of reasons. And this means you are capable of wasting a huge amount of effort energy, time, and funds on harebrained diversionary projects. I wish I could believe that these undertakings and the philosophy behind them were leading us to fundamental change, but I don't believe it. And if you think they are, I think you're kidding yourself. Perhaps it's easier that way. So that's, that's from one of his friends who wrote to him. Uh, so th there was not a lot of uh, uh, warm fuzzies <laughs> around this idea. And then, of course, to make it even worse, like to get it off the ground, because um, Toshi is the force behind everything that Pete did. Like, and, and she kind of thought this was crazy, too. But, you know, Pete was so obsessed about it, she was, she was doing all the organizing. And, of course, she knew that they had to go um, and meet people with money to raise some funds to get this thing off the ground and poor old pete had to go to the, like these barbecues and and cocktail parties and uh, there was this one person that he was talking to and he said but i don't know why you want to uh, sail on the hudson i prefer to sail on the caribbean with my yacht and uh, and pete was like kind of you know clenching his fists and biting his tongue and trying to be polite and so on. But then, of course, um, a lot of people were um, criticizing him for hanging around with these types of people. At that time, um, the environmental movement was involving people like the Rockefellers and so on. And uh, it was not a, a left wing thing. Um, and uh, so that uh, so the and the unions were against the building of the clear water uh, in the area because they thought it was going to threaten jobs. So there was a lot of resistance. And, and then, of course, there, were, there was a lot of debt, too, and that Pete had to sign off on, on, on a number of these loans. And then the, the boat was starting to sail. And it, didn't, it was not going well for the first couple of years. It was really, uh, they were doing like three concerts a night uh, for a long time. Um, and, you know, starvation wages kind of thing and stuff uh, to, to get it off the ground. And eventually it did, did start to pick up bit by bit. And, uh, but one of the things that, you know, in response to the, um, like Pete, when the, the guy mentioned about uh, sailing in the Caribbean, he said, you know, this is exactly why we need the clear water so that people, ordinary people can sail on their own river instead of taking the money away and sailing elsewhere. And uh, so that was kind of the, the, the gist. But uh, before all this, and this, is our, this is the song we're supposed to do. <laughs> um, this, is, this is a song that Pete wrote. It was probably a week, I was probably one year old about the Hudson River. Okay, um, it's, fair. it's an easy one. If you get the first two lines, you've got three quarters of the song. Sailing down my dirty stream, still I love it, and I'll keep the dream. So just try that. Sailing down my dirty stream, still I love it, and I'll keep the dream. And then it just does it again. That someday, though maybe not this year, my Hudson River 
will once again run clear. Well, let's uh, let's start. Oh. Sailing down my dirty stream, still I love it, and I'll keep the dream that someday, though maybe not this year, my Hudson River will once again run clear. Now this part's different. It starts high in the mountains of the north, crystal clear, and icy trickles forth. Now it does the same again, with just a few floating wrappers of chewing gum, dropped by some hikers to warn of things to come. At Glen Falls, 5,000 honest hands work at the consolidated paper plant. Five million gallons of waste a day. Why should we do it any other way? Down the valley, 10 million toilet chains. Find my Hudson a convenient place to drain. And each little city says, who me? Do you think that sewage plants come free? Out in the ocean, they say the water's clear. But I live right at Beacon here. Halfway between the mountains and the sea. Tack and to and fro, this thought returns to me. Sailing down my dirty stream, still I love it and I'll keep the dream. That someday, though maybe not this year, my Hudson River and my country will run clear. Now that you got it, let's do that last two verses again. Out in the ocean, they say the water's clear. Out in the ocean, they say the water's clear. But I live right at Beacon here. Halfway between the mountains and the sea. Tack and to and fro, this thought returns to me. Sailing down my dirty stream. Still I love it and I'll keep the dream That someday, though maybe not this year My Hudson River and my country will run clear My Hudson River and my country will run clear Rebecca was supposed to be the, uh, our, uh, our service leader today, and she got sick. So, and Rebecca's on Zoom, so everybody wave. Everybody wave to Rebecca. Oh, it's, we can't see it. <laughs> so uh, it's now uh, time for uh, an important, for me, one of the most important things at the, uh, at the service is the, sorry, sorry, there we go. I'm really bad at this. I, I have to do my, uh, um, who's the lead singer of The Who? What's his name? Um, not Pete Townsend. Roger Daltrey. I have to do my Roger Daltrey here. Um, OK, it's the lighting of candles of uh, celebration and concern, um, an important aspect of, the, of any Unitarian congregation. So I invite anybody to come up. Um, may the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. Well, this, is, this is a song that uh, the, the clear water, uh, you know, people always say you can't write by committee, but sometimes good things come out of committee work. 
And uh, the Clearwater is definitely one of those, as maddening as any committee is to work with. Uh, but this, is, this next song was written kind of by committee. Um, so every verse is written by a different person or a different, uh, uh, or parts of it were. And, uh, and what's really cool about the song is it kind of does what, it, what the song is about. Okay, the first part of the song is a call and response. So what that means is I sing something and you sing it back, the same thing. Come along with me. And then we have to, because we're going to work together, so we have to sing this part all together, and we have to really belt it out. Upon this broad old river, upon this broad old river, and then we do it again. Come along with me. Upon this broad old river, and then we then it's still call and response this part, um, but we can do it harmonically. Then we will see. Then we will see. Or you can go high. You can go. Then we will see. Or you can go low. We will see. So you have three choices there, and it's not too hard. We will see what we can do what we can do now this is the hard part we have to sing it and there's lots of syllables and lots of notes when we work together in all kinds of weather there's no telling what the power of the people and the river can do and the river can do so we always repeat it at the end because the song is never over got it ready you just have to belt out the broad old river part. That's the best part of the song. Come along with me, come along with me upon this broad old river. Come along with me, come along with me upon this broad old river. We will see, we'll see what we can do, what we can do. For when we work together in all kinds of weather, there's no telling what the power of the people and the river can do, and the river can do. Don't you be scared, don't you be scared, upon this broad old river. Don't you be scared, don't you be scared, upon this broad old river, rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling on all those waves, on all those waves. For when we work together in all kinds of weather, no matter how the wind's gonna blow, we can be safe, we can be safe. Don't you give up hope, don't you give up hope upon this broad old river. Don't you give up hope, don't you give up hope upon this broad old river. Sooner or later, the tide will turn. And when we work together in all kinds of weather, the teachers and the students, they both will learn, they both will learn. Gonna learn the ropes, gonna learn the ropes upon this broad old river. Gonna learn the ropes, gonna learn the ropes out on this broad old river. Bowline and long splice, Clive Hitch and Square. And when we work together in all kinds of weather, like a lot of little fibers of rope, we're gonna hang in there, gonna hang in there. Whoever thought that swimming would be a political, political movement? 
But swimming in the Hudson, which is actually happening now, is a huge achievement. Come for a swim, come for a swim, out on this broad old river. Come for a swim, come for a swim, into this broad old river. Bring the family down to the river shore. You can see winning just by going swimming. You can see what we mean, cause it's cleaner than it was before, than it was before. Now, one of the things that Pete would always be insisting on, and I'm gonna be talking about, I am talking about, is that people need to be writing words about things that are important to them. They should be contributing to the songs that we're singing. And this is a great song, like to, to add verses. And it isn't hard, you just have to do it. Lot of work to do out on this broad old river. Lot of work to do, lot of work to do out on this broad old river. We can rehearse our own little verse. When we work together in all kinds of weather, there's no telling what the power of the people and the river can do, and the river can do. Now, for the, you know, we're doing a series of four here with Pete, and the next, next service, I have a challenge. I have a challenge for all of you. I want you to take You know, Woody Guthrie was always stealing people's melodies. And uh, he, he wrote a song. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. And you know, some of you are going, hey, isn't that uh, Irene Goodnight? It is. Uh, so he stole the melody. I want you to take that melody, and I'll sing it. We'll sing uh, Roll On Columbia, a couple of the verses here. Um, and I want you to write a song. Uh, I want you to write one verse about anything that's important to you. And you can email them to me or uh, how are we gonna get, just bring them, just bring them. Get scroll on any type of thing and we'll sing them the next uh, service. So this is uh, Roll On Columbia. And the reason I want to do, uh, uh, I wasn't planning on doing it, I apologize. Um, uh, I, but I wanted to do Roll On Columbia because I just read something. Did you know that it, at one time, it, like uh, until the 1950s, 50% 50 of our power in Alberta was hydro. At one point, all of Calgary power was hydro. And uh, the <clears throat> hydro projects down there are from like 1911, 1913, and they're still functioning. And I know hydro isn't the perfect solution, that there's problems that you have to make sure the fish and, and land use and so on. But uh, um, it, we now use four or 5% of uh, is, is hydro. Said we're burning coal uh, and, and, and so on, and natural gas. So um, in the 1950s, things changed. They stopped building. Uh, and, and, and people have estimated that we could, with the water power in the province that we have, like uh, the Athabasca River and so on, we could um, power 5.8 million homes. That's more than the population of Alberta right now. Um, so it's... Uh, this, this was uh, written about the uh, Bonneville Dam. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. Your power is turning our darkness to dawn. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. Roll on, Columbia.
Columbia, roll on, roll on, roll on, Columbia, roll on. Your power is turning our darkness to dawn. Your power is turning our darkness to dawn. So roll on, Columbia, roll on. Green Douglas firs where the waters cut through. Down her wild mountains and canyons she flew. Canadian Northwest to the ocean so blue. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. <coughs> roll on, Columbia, roll on. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. Your power is turning our darkness to dawn. So roll on, Columbia, roll on. Other great rivers add their power to you. The Yakima, the Snake, and the Klickitat too. The Sandy Willamette and the Hood River too. So roll on, Columbia, roll on. <coughs> Sorry. Roll on. Roll on, Columbia, roll on. Roll that melody burned in your brain because if you forget it you're gonna have to google it because I expect verses written from you so roll on roll on Columbia roll on roll on Columbia roll on the power <laughs> darkness to dawn so roll on, Columbia, roll on. Sorry about that. As you know, uh, or as I've, I've mentioned, um, anytime Pete writes anything, um, he always works into uh, to it somehow that you should be writing your own songs and you should be doing your own thing. One time Pete was being interviewed and he said, you know, I'm the most conservative person I know. And they went, what? You're a conservative person? He goes, yeah. He said, I sing old folk songs. I <clears throat> want people to make their own music and turn off the technology. I want people to grow their own food if they can and to make their own food. And, uh, and I think that people should be supporting each other in the community. He said, I don't know how more conservative a person could be. Um, when he started the Clearwater, this is one of the things that he wrote. This is in 1968. He's talking about the Hudson River. I too feel like settling a little. In the past few years, I've become more absorbed with the problem of pollution of the Hudson River along whose shore I live. It's an arm of the sea, deep and salty for half its length. Tides extend 150 miles to the dam north of Albany. Once it teemed with fish. Huge sturgeon, 200 pounds, could be speared 10 feet down in the clear water. A hundred years ago, 150 years ago now, uh, the catching and marketing of these fish was an important industry on the Hudson. They called it Albany beef. America used to export caviar to Europe in those days. Caviar comes from virgin sturgeon. Virgin sturgeon's a very fine fish. Virgin sturgeon needs no urgent. That's why caviar is my dish. What has all this to do with a folk music magazine? Simply this. For the past year, I've been helping to run folk music concerts up and down the valley to raise money to build a full-size replica of a huge old-fashioned Hudson River sloop, 75 feet long, 25 feet wide, massed 105 feet, carrying the largest mainsail in the world. Why? For what? We figure that if the Hudson is going to be saved from being a permanent sewer, people must learn to love it again to come down to the water's edge and see it close. 
We plan to sail the boat up and down the river all nine ice-free months of the year, docking at every town, large and small. School children can come down and climb on the rigging and get a whiff of Hudson history. Sailing bus from all over can come aboard. Volunteer crews will raise the sail and anchor. A full-time captain will see that it doesn't run on the rocks. Every year it can take different exhibits to pull up along shore. With an audience of townspeople on the banks, and with the sloop and the river as a backdrop, shows, concerts, movies can be put on. Well, to many of you who read this, it may seem of no matter, but I bring it up because local projects such as this could spring up everywhere. This is the do-it-yourself part. The sloop shows have had fiddlers and ballad singers and blues guitar pickers, songwriters, young and old. We've all been learning from each other. And what ties us all together is a love for this valley. There's a little of Don Quixote and everybody, and a good thing too. And uh, and and with that, you know, I was I was R Star. Has anybody heard of R Star? Well, right now there's a problem with all the wells in Alberta that are no longer that are dormant. And uh, our premier had this great idea that uh, the oil companies, which are obligated to cap them and clean up the, the mess when they're done, well, they won't have to. The taxpayers will pay for it. And so this is her, her plan. And uh, uh, it, it hasn't worked out. She's backed off a bit on it, but it doesn't mean it's gone away. <coughs> One of the people in her cabinet is targeted with special projects and the R star is one of the projects that that she wants this person to work on so it's gone but it isn't gone and um and i was thinking about it and i thought well i should do what pete says to do so we're doing it so this is a song about our own environment here Yes, we made a promise for drilling we began. We would cap the orphan wells and clean up all the land. I just meant, sorry, I just meant. Okay, I just had to get the melody again. Yes, we made a promise for drilling began. We would cap the orphan wells and clean up all the land. We even had a fund for it, although we stopped paying into it. So now we have a problem. Who's gonna pay to clean up the orphan wells? Who's gonna pay to clean up the orphan wells? That's your part. So, who's gonna pay to clean up the orphan wells? Who's gonna pay to clean up the orphan wells? You think that the solution is very clear to see? Just make the corporations do their duty. I don't, doesn't seem that that, sorry. But apparently the UCP doesn't think that's a possibility. So we have a problem. Who's gonna clean, or who's gonna pay to clean up the orphan wells? Who's gonna pay to clean up the orphan wells? Our premier sees the problem, her solution's on its way. She's giving corporations a royalty holiday. To you and me it may make no sense, this obligation deliverance. So still we have a problem. Who's gonna pay to clean up the orphan wells? Who's gonna pay to clean up the orphan wells? It doesn't feel right to me. In fact, it just seems wrong. So for Premier Daniel Smith, I wrote down this song. If people want to do business here, my solution I'll give right here. And I think it's pretty clear. Yes, I have an answer. It's time to make them clean up their own damned wells. It's time to make them clean up their own damned wells.
You know, one time Pete was on, uh, on the Dick Cavett show. And uh, he was, uh, it was, uh, the guests were uh, James Brown and Frank Borman, uh, one of the Apollo astronauts. Nobody remembers him anymore, but uh, he was an Apollo astronaut. And, uh, you know, if anybody remembers the Dick Cavett show, they would, he would really carry on conversations and sometimes get lost in the conversation and forget a guest who was Pete off on the side. And then he looked up and goes, oh my God, Pete, I forgot. He said, I wanted you to sing a song. Uh, we don't have much time. Do you have a short song? And Pete actually did. He had a two line song that he'd never had an opportunity to use. So he came on and he sang, um, here we are knee deep in garbage, flying rockets at the moon. And, and Dick Cavett looked at him and he goes, Pete, do you, do you have some comments on the Apollo project? And Pete goes, well, I think it's strange that we can afford $60 billion to send some people to the moon and we can't afford to clean up the rivers or to build schools or hospitals and, and, and so on. And, and before Frank Borman could even say, that's simplistic, the show ended. <laughs> <laughs> and James Brown leaped over Frank Borman to shake Pete's hand and, and Frank Borman was just floored like, he didn't even get a chance to respond. So, so a two line, two line song uh, can can even make uh, make an effect here. Okay, this uh, <clears throat> Edda, I said I had a surprise for you. There's probably a song that you know, you probably grew up with. Lo, how a rose air blooming. Lo, how a rose air blooming. Yes. Oh, you'll, you'll hear it because we're singing it. So one of the things that Pete would do always is, I mean, he takes other people's melodies because he believes that's the folk tradition. Um, and like sometimes he would write his own songs, like his own music, but often he would just take really good melodies and write new lyrics to them. And this is great, such a beautiful song. Uh, lo, how a rose air blooming, and so many opportunities for, for you to try, for you to try some harmonies, um, and uh, so he wrote uh, of time and river flowing. So we're going to sing this, and of times and river flowing and seasons make a song and we who live beside her still try to sing along of rivers fish and men and there's a part you can go, man. You could try that. And the season's still a coming when she'll run clear again. I just want you to hum. Mm. your hand on your heart. Feel that humming. So many homeless sailors, 
So many homeless sailors, so many winds that blow. I ask the half-blind scholars which way the currents flow. So cast your nets below. And the gods of moving waters will tell us all they know. Let's hum it again. Mm -hmm. So cast your nets below. So cast your nets below. And the gods of moving waters. And the gods of moving waters will tell us all they know. Will tell us all they know. The circles of the planets. The circles of the planets, the circles of the moon, the circles of the atoms all play a marching tune. And we who would join in can stand aside no longer. No, now let us all begin. Let's do the first verse again of season of times and rivers flowing. The seasons make a song, and we who live beside her still try to sing along of rivers, fish, and men, and the seasons still are come. When she'll run clear again. Okay. I see I'm starting to run out of time. So we gotta get moving on. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, another song that, uh, well, Pete uh, one time went solo sailing overnight much to the upset of his wife who was very angry with him when he came back but he came back with this song and uh um and he never really sang it um because he didn't think it was very good and then one day yeah, on the clearwater sloop don mclean who was on the crew was singing it in the back with somebody else and he goes where'd you get that song and he goes well we heard you sing it <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> it's sailing down my golden river. Um, some people play it fast. Pete plays really slow. We'll play it kind of middling because he plays it really slow. Um, sailing down my golden river, sun and water all my own. Yet I was never. Sun and water, old life givers, I'll have them where'er I roam. And I was not far from home. Got it? Got it? 
I don't see any nodding. Of course, I could. Oh, oh, there. Okay. You have to be big nods because I don't have my glasses on. Sunlight glancing on the water. Life and death are all my own. And I was never alone. Life to raise my sons and daughters. Golden sparkles in the foam. And I was never not far from home. Sorry, I always get those mixed up. Sailing down this winding highway, travelers from near and far. Yet I was never alone. Exploring all the little byways, sighting all the distant stars. Yet I was not far from home. Sailing down my golden river, sun and water all my own. Yet I was never alone. Sun and water, old life givers, I'll have them wherever I roam. And I was not far from home, and I was never alone. And I was never alone, and I was not far. And I was not far from home. <clears throat> we have one more song, but. Uh, um, one of the things that I, I really wanted to emphasize today, and I don't know if I have because I got sidetracked and was singing different songs and stuff, but um, is that from despair of, of, of seeing things going really wrong and uh, um, that, that Pete got a crazy idea and he followed it, followed a vision and just little steps, little local steps, uh, eventually produced a fairly significant change. And uh, that we often think of the problems, in, especially in the environment, just seems so big, so overwhelming. And, uh, you know, you can't start there. You can't start there. You have to start, I, I, I think, you have to start you have to start small, uh, smart, small, and local. Um, and the other thing that uh, that discovered from uh, from Pete's experience is that you also have to work together with sometimes with people that you may not always agree with. Um, and and I know they always say politics makes strange bedfellows, but this isn't really politics. This is this is our planet. Um, and we all share it, and it's the only one we got, in spite of Elon Musk. So, um, <laughs> uh, with that, uh, that, the last song is uh, One Blue Sky Above Us. <clears throat> Who knows this? Anybody knows this song? No? Okay, only Virginia. So we'll... So we'll sing it uh, a couple of times, the first verse, until you get it. Because that's the refrain. One blue sky above us, one ocean lapping all our shore. One earth so green and round, who could ask for more? And it just does it again. And because I love you, I'll give it one more try To show my rainbow race It's too soon to die Some folks want to be like an ostrich Bury their heads in the sand 
Some hope that plastic dreams can unclench all those greedy hands. Some want to take the easy way. Poison bombs, they think we need them. Don't you know you can't kill all the unbelievers? There's no shortcut to freedom. One blue sky, one blue sky above us. One ocean lapping all our shore. One earth so green and round. Who could ask for more? And because I love you, I'll give it one more try To show my rainbow race It's too soon to die Go tell, go tell all the little children Go tell all the mothers and fathers too Now's our last chance to learn to share What's been given to me and you One blue sky above us one ocean lapping all our shores One earth so green and round Who could ask for more? And because, and because I love you I'll give it, I'll give it one more try To show my rainbow race It's too soon to die Virginia, could you come up? I want you to just read that passage again. We want to keep singing. We started, and I hope that this means something again. At times, our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. And this is a personal connection that I have. I was um, in my first year of university. This is when I first discovered Pete. And I was studying chemistry. <laughs> and I was really not happy studying chemistry. And um, everything was wrong in, in my life it felt and i was just flipping the channels and there was pete seeger singing and it was like a whole change happened within me at that moment so that was my candle <laughs> okay let's let's do the, the refrain again one blue sky above us Lapping all our shore, one earth so green and brown. Who can ask for more? And because I love you, and because I love you, I'll give it one more try to show my rainbow race. It's too soon to die. 